What's up everyone, it's Dakota, and welcome back to another modern video, and as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be recapping my experience slash record slash deck from SCGCon Columbus that took place this past weekend, and I felt like that this would be kind of like a a good video to kind of outline some of the things I like to dislike about the deck as a whole, you know, my personal experience at the event, kind of what happened uh, from match to match, giving a little bit of the details that I remember from the event. Um, spoiler, it didn't really go as planned. So, you know, it is what it is, but uh, fun nonetheless. But of course, before I get too deep into it and give you all the details, if you are not already subscribed to the channel and you want to see more videos like this, you want to see uh, Pioneer content, other types of videos that hopefully are going to be coming real soon, uh, please hit the subscribe button and ring notification bell down below so you know when those videos go live. And of course, if you go to the links in the description down below, there's the Discord server, there's the uh, there's my Twitch channel as well. You know, you follow those, you'll know when I go live as well. So uh, overall record for SCG Con Columbus, not very good. Uh, we ended up going two and three. Uh, going 0-3 against Scam and 2-0 against the non-Scam deck. So, uh, unfortunately, even, like, on stream, like, we did very well against Scam. Like, at least it felt like it, maybe losing, like, a match to Scam. And then uh, kind of getting, you know, losing to them in the tournament after we've played quite a bit of that matchup and we're able to win way more than we lost is a little disheartening. Uh, that said, you know, I am not super upset by it. Uh, mainly because all my opponents were awesome. I mean, like, all, all five that I played you know, the whole day, you know, great people, awesome. You know, couldn't couldn't have asked for better people to uh, to play against, you know. And really, as far as, like, uh, my play goes, I'm a very uh, self-criticizing person. You know, I definitely am a lot harder on myself than I need to be uh, just because I know what it takes to end up being great is essentially like asking more from yourself and everything. So uh, with that said, you know, this is like the happiest I've been with just my play in itself. Uh, just because I think I put myself in, you know, when I was behind in games, I definitely put myself in a position to kind of get even and then eventually get ahead. And times that I did get ahead, I didn't feel like I let it slip away or, you know, just really kind of uh, firmed the grasp that I had on the game. Uh, to a point where I was able to kind of close it out in the way that it needed to be closed out. Uh, but yeah, kind of like going back to it, you know, all the all opponents that I played against, super nice people. Uh, never really, I mean, didn't really have an issue. I mean, obviously, aside from like losing the matches and stuff, you know, uh, I all around had a great experience at SCG, SCG Con Columbus. Uh, the deck ran, you know, okay. For the most part, um, I drew this Dried Arbor in my opening hand so many more times than I wanted to, uh, and I just absolutely like despise this card now. Like I never, uh, as soon as like I've added more lands to my deck, a Dried Arbor has ended up in my hand way more often than any of these other cards. Um, so that's kind of you know the overall you know without any detail the overall experience of scg con so uh playing against scam uh there was one opponent in particular that absolutely wrecked me and got to uh turn one fury both games and you know like i just never had any like real good hands to, like try to get ahead or anything like that you know so that's whatever but the first scam match and the last scam match that i played uh went to three games and you know, like, in reality, I think maybe if I drew a little, if, like, one of the three things breaks my way, like, if I draw a little bit better, maybe my opponent draws a little bit worse, or, like, they, they play uh, a, a little less optimal, uh, I think that, you know, there's the potential, to, instead of that 2-3 record, we're 4-1, and one and we're, you know, right in the thick of the tournament, you know, just needing to get two wins in, like, the last three rounds, you know, nothing to... Uh, I mean, nothing to really scoff at, you know, just wasn't my day, uh, didn't happen the way that we wanted it to, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, like I'd said before, you know, I think I played to the best of my ability with, you know, the cards that I was dealt, you know, I think I made good mulligany decisions, good sideboarding decisions, uh, it just couldn't come together, you know, and, and that's okay. Um, we, the other two decks we played against, we played against Jund, and we played against uh, Blue Black Shadow, and we uh, won 2-0 against them. Uh, two of the three scam opponents, we uh, lost 1-2, and uh, gain, our one 
other scam match we were owed to. So I believe doing the uh, quick math, I believe that gives us like a six and six record overall, uh, a game record overall with the Ogmoth, 50%. Not necessarily where you want to be at in modern. Obviously, you want to have, you know, higher than 50%. But uh, given the fact that most of our matches like came against scam and you know like our non-scam opponents, we kind of ended up uh, getting to beat down on them in a way. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. I mean, knowing that we can beat scam and proving that we ha we can beat that deck, and then on top of that, like playing against some of the other decks that are a little bit grindier, maybe a little more controlling. You know, from like the blue black shadow side, and definitely grindier coming from like Jund. Uh, the, the fact that we've won those games and honestly won them pretty easily, you know, gives me a lot of confidence playing Yawgmoth going forward. That uh, this deck is like might be a tier two deck, but is also very capable of just straight up like winning games. And of course, you know, we've seen it, you know, win challenges. We've seen it do well in prelims and things like that. You know, uh, so I guess it shouldn't be like too much of a surprise. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's a relatively complicated deck and i think uh having the feeling in the, the grasp of what to do in certain matchups and how to sideboard and you know mulligan decisions and things like that you know make me feel good just personally playing the deck going forward that it is a deck that i could eventually you know see some success with in you know maybe qualifying for a regional championship or something to that effect you know just taking down like a bigger tournament so uh that's kind of what I liked. Uh, some specific things about the deck. Uh, I was not super high on Orcish Bowmasters uh, in the deck itself. You know, I believe I believe that it's a very good card for Modern. I didn't think it was a very good card for Yawgmoth. Uh, was going to consider playing a deck list that only had like one, which is the one that we'd been playing on stream. Opted to get as close as I could to uh, Demonic Tutor's list, who is basically like the father of the Yog father, And... Uh, Playing for Bowmaster ended up feeling a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, while I w never found myself like absolutely wanting like a Bowmaster, you know, for like my draw step to cord for it to uh, evolution for it, whatever. Uh, definitely in the spots where I had it, it was very very good and it definitely impressed me. So I'm definitely going to uh, look forward to playing more. Uh, well, playing the four Orcish Bowmaster and in, in the future until this card really doesn't feel all that great. Uh, definitely overperformed. Uh, having you know two Strangle Root guys in the deck rather than uh, four that we were playing in our original list also uh, made me feel like okay. Like I've never like I saw a lot of the fact that I had two Strangle Root guys in my deck and there were a decent amount of games where I just naturally drew one way before I even saw like a Yog Moth or anything like that. Which up until like the third match of the day, I never naturally drew a Yog Moth in any of my games, which was like insane. Um, but we drew a decent amount of string root guys, so that made me feel better about only having two in my deck. Uh, for that reason, uh, Hapatra was also kind of nice uh, game to play with. Um, it really makes me angry, and this isn't even like a like a necessarily a knock or like a bad thing on the deck, but like delighted halfling, like you know you get to cast like you know these these cards here uh for you know the the colored mana and uncounterable so you have like 10 cards that do it and then you have of course like these double green spells and these triple green spells but like delighted halfling a lot of the time just like uh adds mana and then ends up casting something actually impactful you know where you know ignoble hierarch obviously can cast any one of these cards and stuff so uh Definitely feels like Delighted Halfling should be kind of like the odd card out uh, as far as like the dorks and stuff. But, you know, having that second toughness and really the fact that, you know, uh, either adding colorless mana or like the colored mana uh, hasn't really necessarily mattered for casting a lot of these things uh, makes me feel really good. Also explains why, you know, there is a lack of Strangaroo guys in the deck considering that you cannot cast it off of a Delighted Halfling. So, uh... While, again, seems like a card that shouldn't work, it actually ended up working very, very well. Uh, two Endurance, I really wanted. Uh, two Eldritch Evolution, that was like fine, plenty enough. Shieldred, definitely an overperformer for me in the deck. Uh, just just the fact that uh, there was games where like I just put her into play and 
like opponents couldn't do anything about it you know on stream you know in you know in the tournament and stuff like that you know this card was definitely very good and i'm going to be keeping at least one copy in the deck moving forward uh grist as always like is a card that uh when i first started playing yawgmoth i was not super i mean i thought it was cool i mean just the fact that you make a one one every turn have the potential to make more you know obviously you could sack these later to uh yawgmoth to end up drawing extra cards you know and then uh, using Gogmoth's ability to you know essentially help put my counters on things because of Gris make tokens and then discarding creatures from your hand to proliferate those tokens uh, to proliferate those counters to then be able to ultimate Grist and kill your opponent uh, and just has overall become a card that's been more and more impressive and uh, I'll probably never not jam four copies in my deck because this card has just been amazing uh, overall uh as far as some of the other like new additions like uh i haven't played with Pendlehaven or like takanuma and takanuma has been uh pretty good as like a grindy piece of tech in the deck just you know drawing it it's essentially ends up being a spell you know it got me back a uh shieldred it's gotten back a uh a grist because grist is a creature when it's in the graveyard i guess it gets back creature or planeswalker but if it's just creature you know you get back grist that's really sweet uh, Pendlehaven as well uh, was you. I got to use it kind of in both ways. I got to use it offensively just to kind of get like extra points of damage in. I also you got to use it to protect against a uh, protect against an opposing Bowmaster against a Red and Six. So uh, definitely pretty sweet. Uh, a card that I really didn't understand fully why it was in the deck, considering that like you know like Bowmaster and uh, Young Wolf and the Gris tokens are the only ones that really get kind of buffed by it. Uh, but it ended up actually being very well, you know, it, very good, I should say. It ended up being very good. Colony Gardens uh, are kind of like the uh, card people were playing with uh, Arboreal Grazer and Bounce Lands to try to get more tokens into play from it. Uh, really, it ended up being very good uh, in its own right, uh, just being able to play it as like a tap land on turn one. Just be playing these, uh, these nine one drops. And, you know, getting to kind of go into these two drops that can then later cast one drops if you play, like, Wall of Roots. Uh, Call Me Garden has been kind of like a non-issue. Of course, the stinking Dryad Arbor has uh, gone through every link to just absolutely piss me off by being in, like, opening hands. I had a game against Scam where, you know, it was a one-lander. I had Veil of Summer, you know, which I have my sideboard. And uh, Dryad Arbor was my only land. So, like, instant mulligan, just absolutely tilting. Uh, overall from the main deck though, uh, ended up being pretty good. Um, probably going to keep Dryad Arbor in here because I'm not bold enough to actually take it out because eventually it'll get to a point where like I never draw this card and I'll only be able to fetch for it. So that'll be kind of a sweet day. Uh, Gris overperformed, Yawgmoth great as always, you know, uh, the split on f two Evo for Cord feels pretty good and just playing uh, more Endurance and stuff uh, seems like a really good option as well. Uh, the sideboard, I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, I wasn't playing Chalice of the Voids. I basically uh, fully copied to, uh, Demonic Tutor's list from the event. But I was playing uh, these cards here, the Force, uh, the Endurance, these cards here. Really, there was only like two cards that I didn't play, and it was like the Chalice of the Voids. And not really because I didn't want to, but because like it was going to be another 150 bucks, and you know there was uh, some suitable replacements for like Chalice of the Void. But these 13 cards, I was totally fine with. Uh, obviously, I played against uh, Scam a lot, so like uh, Veil of Summer, like the One Ring, and things like that, you know, were pretty nice to have. Uh, overall, I really like the deck. Uh, going forward, I'm definitely going to be playing more Yawgmoth. I'm going to be playing as much as I can. Keep getting better. Uh, there is an RCQ coming up in about a month that I plan on attending to. So hopefully in that time, maybe some uh, new updates happen. And Yawgmoth uh, gets just a little bit better. Gets some kind of uh, upgrades that maybe I can make to the deck before the tournament itself. So then, obviously, put us in a better position to win. Uh, if not, you know, just getting more reps in playing this deck. Uh, possibly making better mulligan decisions, fine-tuning the sideboard just a little bit more, you know, and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. That is going to wrap up this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Uh, comment down below 
uh, whatever decks you want to see next week. I know this is kind of like a, a special thing, so we'll get back to our normal, you know, diving into modern, you know, come next week. Uh, and of course, uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, follow the links down below. That's going to do for me. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.